Uh, Darkfi is a, a platform for launching applications. Like now we have anonymous chat, uh, anonymous organizations, anonymous tasks, uh, anonymous trading. So it's like an entire kind of platform. You know, you've got your social media, you've got your economic activity, you can organize, you can mobilize. Um, so, but it's, it's tools for, you know, not for just trivial st stuff, but for doing real things, like real needs, real important th uh, things that people need to do. Right, okay. And so, I mean, I'm somewhat familiar with DeFi yeah. and all the liquidity pools stuff, and I, okay. I assume you, it's a similar suite of yep. uh, tools, only the privacy aspects. Yeah, so DogFi is like the anonymous version of Ethereum. Right, okay. And it has its own its own native token. Yes, it has its own token, its own blockchain, etc. Right. What's the name of that chain? Uh, Darkfi. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and in the token? Uh, it, well, it's not launched yet. It's we're not mainnet. Right. Okay. We're just testnet for now, but we're coming soon to mainnet. Gotcha. Okay. So this reminds me now a little bit of these other privacy tokens, Monero. We've seen down yeah. there, and um, was it was Dash. Yeah, it's Dash, Monero, Z Zcash. Zcash, and so this Firo. is like a, an, an evolution of those. Yeah, exactly. Which it's, allows it's a project. More... It's been in like uh, research and development for many years now, for like five years. Right. Okay. And but outside of it as a product or a suite of tools, can you like what's the philosophy? Like, who's attracted to this as a solution for problems? Like, uh, you know, who's the main customer? Who's the number number one customer? I guess. So right now. Uh, we see in England that people are being shut down for free speech and the states are becoming authoritarian and they're like, and we live in this surveillance apparatus, which is very dangerous because it stops people, um, you know, from being able to politically organize. And so Darkfire is the attempt to like create this like uh, platform, which is completely anonymous, completely uncensored and completely sovereign, like resistant to any attack and um, you know uh, we have this concept where you know what we see happening now um, in in cryptocurrency is it's splitting into two parts one part is the reg fi which is like um, above ground is regulated you know it's completely compromised and and you know but that's not what cryptocurrency about is about cryptocurrency what was uh, was made to deliver uh, freedom to people, to allow people to escape, um, you know, uh, tyranny and to uh, be able to create a parallel free society. And that's what we, that's what we want to bring forward. And the name DarkFi comes from um, the director of the FBI made a speech in 2013 where he talked about the going dark problem, which if enough people on the internet start using uh, cryptography technology, it will create these dark zones in the internet uh, where law enforcement will not be able to go in. And we actually, rather than seeing that as a bad thing, we think that's a good thing. That's what people need um, because it's really important to have freedom for people. And so um, we have this concept of the dark forest, which is, you know, the internet now, it's like just a desert. It's like a hom homogenous desert under the surveillance. And it, it's like a desert that reduces everything to being the same, you know, the same thoughts, the same speech, etc. And the dark forest, though, the forest we contrast that with the forest, which is it provides cover and concealment. And it's and there's all little uh, uh, areas, there's distinctiveness. And so that allows the kind of cyber gorilla to mobilize, to move and to be protected. And this is what we need more than ever because, um, you know, people are really suffering and the, the states are becoming authoritarian and they're like dividing communities and they're like, they, they're trying to stop people having community. And so, okay, what can you use Dark Five for? Um, well, imagine an authoritarian, you know, government comes into power and they start putting your friends in jail. Okay, then what you can do on Dark Five, you can create an organization, a DAO, and you can uh, do fundraising and you can fundraise into that organization and then you can collectively manage it using token weighted voting fully on chain and then um, 
you can communicate fully anonymously and uh, and then also uh, make payments to people or payment for things and you can organize and you can mobilize and you can trade and you can new and as a basis for uh, new online communities to resist authoritarianism we've made like the world's most anonymous chat system uh, that, that exists like all the messages are completely un unlinkable we've made the world's first and only fully anonymous DAO which is an on-chain organization where you can put funds in and is managed by the uh, by the to token holders like it's like democratic we have like anonymous task manager etc because we're engineering for the future and nobody else is doing this in cryptocurrency. Everybody in cryptocurrency is compromised because they're taking money from, you know, the the big companies, from the central banks, etc. So they're like they're give, they're saying, oh, we're going to make a revolution, but they're already lost before they begin because they're compromised. But, that, but that's an interesting point there because you, we see in <clears throat> on EVM, DeFi, these sort of benevolent leaders of their own little tribes on different chains around their project usually it's a, a you know meme coin or a token or something yeah. what mechanisms are have have been put in place to prevent that sort of happening uh, occurrences in in, uh, in in dark fire because you mentioned authoritarianism and I, and I i i can't help but think a lot of these tools just accelerate or make more efficient those processes that we already have in the you know governments and corporations already have today so are there preventative measures in place at the protocol level or whatever to... to yeah. So the problem with all of these projects, like Ethereum, is um, they've fallen into the same trap of the thing they claim to be fighting against, which is like, oh, we're going to construct a new system to manage people. That's completely the wrong way of doing things. And in fact, like when you create a community, it needs to have a philosophy. That needs to be at the heart of everything you do. And DarkFi, we take a completely different approach. Is like, what are the tools that communities need? What are the tools that people need? And we engineer for that. That's why in cryptocurrency, despite having all these billions of dollars of wealth you know, et cetera, and all this time, they haven't been able to put products that people need into people's hands. And instead, they're like just creating new tools for speculation or things that are not useful. So I think it really comes down to philosophy and, um, and um, creating a community that embody, embody that philosophy. And that's a great point because Satoshi... Um Sort of va well, he vanished, or, sh or they vanished, or whatever. Um, but the philosophy lives on. How how has that changed or been co-opted by yeah. certain groups over the last, I think, f 15 years? Is Bitcoin something? Early Bitcoin uh, had a very strong uh, ideology that drove it, which was you know um, the evils of the central banks, you know gold-backed currency you know, libertarianism, etc. And that was really important. It was like, the vision was, you know, um, the central banks, they're taking money from people. And, you know, Bitcoin, let's create this like universal sound money. And that was really important because it gave focus and it was able to drive the community forward towards that goal. But as cryptocurrency has grown or evolved, those ideas have, they're limited. And there's been a need to, to change or to update those ideas. And that hasn't happened inside of cryptocurrency. And there haven't been... The, people have attempted to cr construct new narratives, but usually just, you know, like to sell a product. And, you know, they're not, they're not really connected to like a deeper philosophy. They're just, you know, very surface level narratives. Like, oh, you know, modular blockchains is the new next big thing, etc. you know. Um, so there's like, there's, because, you know, first of all, universal sound currency, the whole world, if they had to live under like one global currency, one global economic system, that'd be very dystopian. That'd be very, um, yeah, that would be totalitarian almost. And we've seen in cryptocurrency that there's like many currencies and they will have different uses, etc. So there's, there's been a need, there's like, a need for the the ideology or the philosophy to evolve because that old set of ideas in Bitcoin no longer get, equips people with the power to understand or to like 
or the equips it no longer equips people with the concepts that allow them to understand the world effectively and um and and so it's 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 remained stunted and that has allowed other groups to come in and you know nihilist groups to just kind of take advantage of that and to just use it as get rich quick schemes and you see pe cryptocurrency people who they have values kind of decrying that going oh you know um these people these bad actors coming in taking advantage making scams on crypto but it's also a failure on our part a failure to put forward a compelling vision you know to build our side of the movement but what would you say to someone who was considering trying to launch a token on one of you know one of these chains because they believed in their product and they had some sort of deeper mission like outside of yeah how would you advise them i suppose because community is so important even to an extent more than more so than the product or the service that you're yeah. supposed to provide so um in tech there's like a strategy now that everybody's taking which is um you know, make a, make a product, it's a shiny product, it's non-threatening, you know, it doesn't threaten the status quo, and get VC money, which the VC money, they get it from the system, from the central banks. And when you're a part of that, you know, you're, you have to act in a certain way. And the thing is, that elite class is very detached from what the entire rest of the world is experiencing right now, what people are saying or, or thinking or feeling. And if you want to build something that tap into that popular energy, you know, you need to, um, you, you have to, you have to um, encode your values into your software from, from the foundation, from the base, and you have to build for the future. Don't build for now, for the people now that are in power, because they won't be in power. That's coming to an end. Um, and that's why technology has become stagnant and has, and has failed to, in the recent years, deliver innovation. It's just because people are stuck in a dead end. If you want to, you need to break free of that. And, to, and because your community and the people that... Is, is not just like random people that you, you're like building an organism and the center of that organism is the story that you tell. So if you want to create something that's powerful, you need to have a powerful story that speaks to people. And can you have that powerful story without the human individual? Because, you know, the, you mentioned DAOs before. Usually yeah. they do these multi-sig type setups where they have a, a couple of people, three out yeah, of... That's terrible. Yeah, or you have the benevolent director, one dude who just pushed it out and has a story to tell. Like, which, yeah, which is the better way to go? Because it seems like, those, yeah. are those the only, only options? No, I, I, it's very bad now because on the internet, um, it's all become about celebrity culture, about personality. And the thing is, is that I have a friend who's like runs a major project and I really disagree with what he says but this is what he says he says oh man you know when you make a project you can't have too many alphas you have to have betas under the control of alphas otherwise the alphas will fight and tear the project apart but that's a good thing you want strong people you know in your projects you know fighting to make the best thing you want thinking people the problem is today when people build organizations because the leaders themselves are so weak, they only want to have slave people underneath their control. And the thing is, if you're trying to create a new type of society and you start building that form of organization, you've already lost before you started. Instead, what we should be building is we should be lifting people up. We should be, uh, you know, people that have potential, putting things into them, you know, putting uh, skills in them, helping develop their talent. So we create the future leaders, you know, so that we actually build something that's bigger than ourselves, um, so that actually has a chance of success. But every, everybody's just concerned with their own 
position of power and that's that's why they that's why we're so limited in like what we've been able to do and everybody's like competing just to get above the other person how can we do anything bigger when you know uh, we live in this situation where states are using intelligence agencies to divide people from one from the other to divide communities if we will fight against each other how can we build something new so we need to escape out of that that's essential and the way that we do that is by uh, uh, developing people, enhancing people. That's why in Darkfire we have a, a training system. We have an academy where we, we train people in philosophy, we train them in technical skills. That's like open to everybody in our, in our community.